Okay, uh, we today are going to be looking at uh, optimization problems having to do with revenue. Uh, again, we looked at last time in the last lesson uh, that optimization is to maximize or minimize a specific characteristic. Uh, in this case, we're going to be optimizing revenue. Uh, revenue, as we know, is the cost of an item times how many you sell. So, for example, if Starbucks sells uh, pumpkin spice lattes for $4, if they sell 20 of them, they make $80 in revenue. So let's look at a specific example. <clears throat> uh, this particular example is looking at a computer program. And here's how the question reads. <clears throat> it says, if a computer program costs $20, 300 students will buy it. For every $5 price increase, 30 few, fewer students will buy the program. What price will maximize the revenue and what is the maximum revenue? So for example, just before we get into this problem, uh, they have all sorts of possible revenues. Uh, one would be at a cost of $20. It says they would sell 300. So that revenue would be a total of $6,000. Uh, if they decreased it by $5, so let's say to $15, or sorry, for every $5 increase. Uh, if they increased it by $5, let's say to $25, 30 fewer students, which would be 270 students, would buy the program. And their revenue would be $6,750. Uh, you could do this as long as you wanted to, but this is the concept of the problem. At some point, they're going to charge so much for the program uh, that they would not be able to sell any whatsoever. Okay, so that's the basis of the program. What we can do here is actually set up a quadratic function to solve for what the maximum revenue and cost will be. Uh, here's how. We use the basic premise that revenue equals the cost of the item times the number sold. Also, what we don't know, or the variable, uh, is going to be the number of price increases. So we're going to represent in revenue problems uh, the number of price increases or decreases, in this case the number of price increases, uh, with n or x or any variable. Uh, in this case I'm going to let n equal the number of price increases. In this case, uh, cost then, at homeostasis, the cost would be $20, homeostasis being the point at where there's no price changes whatsoever. Uh, so the cost would be $20, and then for every $5 price increase, it would be plus $5 per increase. Uh, the number sold at homeostasis, or before there's any price changes, uh, would be 300, but they would lose 30 customers per price increase. If we use these two um, expressions and substitute them into the formula for revenue, we'll notice that we actually have a quadratic function. And then I'll explain how we can solve something with that. Uh, so revenue is equal to cost, which in this case is 20 plus $5 per price increase, times number sold, which is 300 minus 30 people per price increase. Now what we can do is put this into standard form, and then we'll talk about the next step. Uh, standard form here would be uh, 6,000 minus 600N plus 1,500N minus 150N squared. So when we collect like terms, we will have that it's negative 150 n squared plus 900 n plus 6,000. Now the key word that we looked at in the last lesson is this word maximize, max, minimize, optimize. Um, and we discussed how it would be valuable to know where the vertex is, because where the vertex is is where either the maximum or the minimum of this particular function will occur. Uh, so what I'm going to do is complete the square with this example. Okay. 
<clears throat> that's going to help us to know where the vertex is. Uh, we've looked at completing the square in previous lessons. Uh, so what we're going to do here is add and subtract 9 to create our perfect square. Uh, remove the 9, the negative 9, and we'll have our completed square being revenue is equal to 150 times n minus 3 squared plus 7,350. Now if we think about this according to a graph, which we can do, uh, our axes in this case would not be an x and a y axis. Uh, they've been replaced with a revenue axis and a number of price increases axis. Uh, the vertex of this point is n is equal to 3. Sorry, someone just came into my room. Uh, I was saying uh, the vertex is where n is equal to 3 and r is equal to 7,350. So this is the point here, 3 for n and 7,350 for r. Uh, in this case, we know also that it opens down. <clears throat> so uh, now we can actually answer the questions. If we know that n is 3 at a maximum revenue of $7,350, well, we know that the number of price increases needs to be 3. In other words, to figure out the price that will maximize the revenue, it's going to be the cost equal to 20 plus 5 times 3 price increases, which is going to be $35. So the price that will maximize the revenue is $35. And in answer to the second part of the question, what is the maximum revenue? That's right here. $7,350. So the maximum revenue would be, from the vertex, $7,350. I'm going to do a second example here, uh, very similar if you understand the concept. You don't need to look at the second example. Uh, but just a slight difference has to do with the fact that n is going to equal the number of price decreases instead of the number of price increases. There's a few other small differences, but same idea. We're going to look at Perfect Fabs selling cloth. Uh, so as we know, revenue is equal to cost times number sold. In this particular case, uh, we're looking at Perfect Fabs, and they sell 250 meters of cloth at $8 per meter. And for every 50 cent reduction, they sell more cloth. Write a quadratic function. What price maximizes the revenue? How many meters of cloth are sold? And what is the maximum revenue? Uh, so in this case, we're going to, again, let n equal the number of price decreases. cost in this case. Uh, at homeostasis, before there's any change, it is $8. And then they are going to subtract 50 cents for every price decrease. And the number sold in this case, uh, before there's any changes, is 250 meters, but they sell 50 more meters of cloth per price decrease. So our quadratic function to model this is that revenue is equal to cost, which is 8 minus 0 0.5. We had to have the same type of unit, so I changed 50 cents into $0.5 uh, times 250 plus 50N. As we make this into, and some of you may want to stop, pause here, and see if you can actually get the correct answers yourself. And then fast forward to the end and see if you got it correct. So uh, you may want to challenge yourself to do that. Uh, I'm going to do this part pretty quickly. Uh, so we have 2,000 plus 400 N plus or minus 125 N 
uh, minus 25n squared in standard form is negative 25n squared plus 275n plus 2,000. And that leaves us, uh, when we are now completing the square, uh, with... Ah, there will be one other small difference in just a second as well, you'll see. Um, and that is the fact that what we have to do here to complete our square is add and subtract 5.5 squared. So we're going to get decimal numbers, which is absolutely fine. <clears throat> so revenue is equal to 25. Now let me just complete that. This will be 30.25, So we are left with revenue equaling negative 25 times n minus 5.5 squared plus 2,756.25. Uh, so in answer to all of our questions, uh, we know where the vertex is, and we can then substitute points of the vertex uh, into our expressions for cost and number sold to finally solve. So we have revenue and n. In this particular case, our value for n is 5.5. And our value for revenue is 2,756.25. And it opens once again down. So in this particular case, uh, what price will maximize the revenue? Well, we need 5.5 price decreases. So the cost will be 8 minus 0 0.5 times 5.5, which will be 8 minus 275, which is $5.25. Uh, an answer to the second question, uh, how many meters of cloth are sold? Well, that will be right here. So sold is equal to 250 plus 50 times 5.5. And that's going to end up being 525 meters, I believe. And finally, the maximum revenue is already there for us. So the maximum revenue will be $2,756.25. Just to confirm that, let me multiply uh, the cost times the number sold. And we should get the revenue, $5.25 times... 525 equals the revenue. Okay, so that is that problem.